Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Mark. I'm a cinematographer based in the UK, and today I'm going to be taking you through some of my favorite portable lighting solutions. So let's get into it. So if like me, you do a lot of solo operating and you have to travel, you can't always take your car. If I'm going into London, I'm getting the tube and I'm getting the train because driving in London is crazy, costs a lot of money. So if I can, I'll get the train, which means that I have to carry my lighting with me. So I'm going to be taking a look today at some of the portable lighting solutions that I have and that I take on jobs with me. First up, and I'm sure you're all aware of this, it's the little Aperture MC. I love this light, I've had it for a long time and it basically sits in my camera bag all the time. It's so light and portable, I'd be silly to not just take this with me. Now, this light retails when I bought it, it was about £80, so about $100. It fluctuates between that and just over 100 You can pick it up on a deal sometimes, but if you've got the money and you're looking for an incredibly portable light, then this is amazing. Some of the features that I love about this light, it's got a magnetic back. That's super handy if you're in a situation where you can actually stick it to the wall. Super useful, stops you sticking gaffer tape or some kind of sticky mess on the back of the light. It's got various modes built in, you know, by now we all know the features that RGB lights come with. Cop car, lightning, <laughs> faulty bulb and TV. It's got all of those filters in as standard. It felt like this was one of the original kind of small portable lights. It feels like now there's a lot of options out there. It's got an internal battery and it also runs off USB-C. So I'm just going to turn this on. Whew. Look at that. It's got a little screen on top of the device there that just tells you the intensity and the color temperature. It's got some buttons on the side. You can't really see those. It's RGB. I didn't mention that, but it's RGB. You can go change the color temperature as well. And it comes pretty standard. It comes with a USB-C cable and also this little device here. So pretty much this is like a diffusion. It sits on the light, always stays on there for me. I, I leave this on pretty much all the time and that just helps diffuse the light, makes it a little bit softer. So that's full brightness. It's not too bright, it's not crazy, but it is a tiny little light. So for the size of it, I think it gets pretty bright. You can fit this into small, tiny little places, you know, bridges, cars, fits in your pocket. You know, you can carry it. If you can't fit it in your camera bag, <laughs> you can fit it in your pocket. Not hugely bright, but for the size and the price, it's a pretty robust light. I've had it for probably two, three years now, and it's served me well. Never had any issues with it, and the battery lasts quite a long time inside of it. So yeah, Aperture MC. I know you've heard of it, but great little portable light. So next up, I've got this light, and it's the Kelvin Play Light. And this is great. It's probably just a little bit bigger than the MC um, Aperture Light, but it is a lot brighter, I've noticed, and I'll I'll show you in a second. But yeah, super portable, like the MC Aperture Light. It's got magnets on the back, which is good because you can mount it to anything magnetic. It's also got a little screen on the back, which I like a lot because it gives you information about where on the color spectrum the light is. But one thing that stands out with this light for me is that you can dial in specific gels. So CTBs, half a CTB, CTOs, stuff like that. It's got professional gels built in. Now, without a color temperature meet, um, meter, you couldn't, you can test that for sure, but I'm sure with a name like Kelvin, it's gotta be color accurate, right? Just to put it into perspective, here's the Kelvin play light com compared to the aperture. It's probably double the size almost, not quite, but almost double the size of the aperture. And it is bigger and heavier than the aperture, but it does give you more light. Runs off USB-C, has an internal battery, incredibly portable. Like what I love these days is how many portable light options we have. I was lucky enough that Pro AV lent me this. I don't own it. I would love to buy one of these because when paired with something like the Aperture, you can quickly see how you can build up a really portable little light pack that you can take on shoots. This is gonna be super useful if you're not taking many lights or if you've got a couple of these. The output's more than enough light to do, like to do some simple interview setups. And it's super tiny. I mean, you know, when you go back, you know, 10 years to the, the big LED panels, they weren't the strongest outputs and they ran off VLOX. So it's really tempting that you could easily fit three of these into your bag and it's not gonna take up much room. So I'm a big fan of this light. And yeah, I love on the back, 
You can see the dial system there. So you can see it booting up there, little Calvin logo. And you can see you've got the dial. But yeah, I really like this and, and really easy to navigate. One thing about the, the app picture is it can be a bit fiddly with the buttons sometimes and you're going cycling through the different buttons. Still a great light, but it's nice to have, you know, a few different dials there, various buttons. And yeah, nice screen, nice big screen that you can see. The quality of the light, it feels robust. It feels, if I had to guess, which I'm probably wrong. I don't know if you've ever tried to estimate something's weight. I have, I'm generally wrong, but it feels about double the weight of the MC. Heavy duty, outputs a lot of light and yeah, it's nice that it has an internal battery. You can see you've got your little mounts in the bottom there and the side. So side and the bottom, depending which configuration you want to mount this in. And yeah, if it's running low on power, you can obviously run this from a, a little portable battery bank. So big fan of this light and you can buy this from Pro AV. I'll put a little link down in the bio. Um, it is more expensive than the MC Aperture light, but then it, the output is higher. So it's just, you know, it depends which way you want to go. If you want to go with something a bit bigger, a bit heavier, higher output, or keep small like the MC Aperture Lights. So I'm going to set this up now. I'm going to turn all my lights off, and just give you some idea. I wish I had a light meter. I could take some intensity readings, but pretty sure Pro AV put the readings on the website. So I'll check that. I'll put it on the screen if it is there. Um, or I could check out the website if, if that information is available online. I'll also put it up on the screen. But yeah, I'm going to set this up on a stand just off screen and I'll just turn it on full brightness, 50%, just so you get an idea of how bright it is. So this is quite moody now. This is basically all my lights off apart from this little fill right here. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn this light on full brightness. We'll, we'll see how bright it is. I don't know why I'm, I'm whispering. I think because when you turn the lights off, all of a sudden you feel like shh, shh. But let me put this light on. So that is 100% right now. I've put it right in front of me. It's pretty bright. Um, really, really good. It's probably about, I would say, just under a meter away from me. And the ISO on this camera is set to 640, I think. It's the lowest. Yeah, 640 on the camera. The stop on the lens is 4.1. It's one of those zoom lens that just changes the stop as you zoom. Annoying to be in between a stop, but that's what it is. And it's a 180 degree shutter. So yeah, that's that's to give you some idea. I know that's probably hard to calculate, hard to, to imagine, but yeah, it's pretty full. I'm gonna turn this light down to 50% now and you can see what that looks like. So that's now at 50%. You can see it's a little bit darker. The color temperature of this light, I've got it set to 3400. Now I'm gonna turn it down to the, the dimmest light available and I'm doing that because sometimes with LED lights I've noticed that the fall off between the lowest setting and zero is quite a big gap and that can be quite annoying because really you want to dial the light down to almost non-existent. So I'm going to dial it down as dim as it can go before it turns off. This is 0.1. I'm going to put it up to 1%. So this is 1%. It's still very very dim. So this now is 12%. It does go down really nicely and it does get dim very gradually, which is a great, you know, a great thing to have. So you can really dial it down to get it to the right intensity that you want. So yeah, I'm going to turn my lights back on now because it's so dark in here. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, I'm back. Okay. So yeah, it dims down really nicely. I'm going to do it now. I've got the lights on. I'm just going to dim it down just so you can see. So that's 12%, 10%. 7%, 3%, and 1% there. So yeah, quite nice, incremental, and it goes all the way back up to 100, which is pretty bright. Really nice little light. I would I would love one of these in my, my arsenal of lights. So the next light I'm showing you is my most recent purchase. I saw this, picked it up on an Amazon deal. So it's the Small Rig RC 60 watt, and this is it. Again, pretty small, you know, the size of a, a small Blackmagic's new box camera, maybe. <laughs> it's pretty small. Again, it fits into my camera bag. I did a video a couple weeks back now showing you what goes in my camera bag. This light is my new favorite to fit in there. Another great feature about this light is it's got an internal battery. Now it says on the screen when you turn it on that you get about one hour of use at full intensity. So that's pretty good for a light this strong. And 
You can get this in various packs, depending on what you're looking for. You can get it with different attachments that all comes with it, or you can get just the basic light itself. The one thing about this light is it doesn't come with a converter so that you can fit the bigger domes on, but it, it does come with its own version of that. But you do have to buy the smaller ones. I don't know if anyone makes a converter. I know that iFootage do a converter basically that you can fit your light into and it you know, makes it the standard fitting so that you can put all the diffusion attachments on it. So I'm going to just turn this on and show you the screen on the side. It's nice that it's got a screen that you can see and it's got a switch at the back rather than just a push and hold button, which I prefer, to be honest. I prefer it when they have a, a switch because you, you can tell from feel if you can't see if it's turned on. That little screen there and it doesn't turn on. So that's what I'm noticing about a lot of these lights is that they, if you turn them off and you turn them back on, they will be off until you actually change that dial. It says rotate the interior button one turn to power on. So I think that the reason they do that is because they don't want the lights turning on and blinding someone. It's so you can give people a bit of a warning. You could stay striking the lights turning on. They know that. So this light now is at 1%. So you can see compared to the aperture holding it at arm's length, it's pretty bright. And that's just 1%. I would like it if it went down a little bit further before it turned off. I spoke earlier about some of these lights, how they go from one to zero, and there's quite a big jump. I would say this is quite a big jump from one to zero, which is a shame it doesn't go down in a bit more incremental stages. Um, let's turn this up to 100%. Try not to blind me. You can see there that it's already filling up the room with light. It is bright. Basically lost all the detail in my face there. Um, so you can see it gets pretty bright and when you turn this down to let's say 50% it's showing that the battery is about an hour and a half you'll get on that and you can see if I just bounce that off my wall here it's filling my face with light and again with this light you've got all the standard modes and you've got color temperature this light is not RGB but it is by color I buy all my lights by color because you never know what situation you're going to be in really and Usually the price difference between the non-bicolor and the bicolor version is quite small. It is worth noting um, on some lights that will affect how accurate the color is, but it's usually a small difference. So for me, the trade-off is, is worth it. But, you know, for you, maybe you're in a studio, the lights are all going to be one color temperature and you could save yourself a bit of money and get the non-bicolor version. But I do like the screen on this. I like that it's big, it's easy to see. And it just means that when you're navigating modes, it's a lot easier to do. Now the kit I got with it, it comes with a battery holder. The great thing about this light is it runs off USB-C, meaning that you can basically put any battery that has a USB-C output or even a USB um, to USB-C cable you could get and run it off your older power banks. That's going to give you a lot of extra battery power and the fact that you can get an, a holder that clips onto the back that holds that battery, that's going to be quite useful. Doesn't come in the standard pack but it does come in one of the bundles. Comes with this little mini attachment here that's going to focus your beam, make the light a bit more intense. You can see inside it's got nice shiny reflective pattern to bounce that light and yeah make it more focused. Now I bought with this light, one of the mini domes with it. Good for interviews, it's good for just, you know, texturing that light and breaking it up a bit so it's not so harsh. This is it, this is how it comes. Um, it is worth noting that you have to buy this separately. It's about 39 pounds on Amazon. Um, you might be able to get it cheaper somewhere else. So here it is when you've got it built up, it's a lot smaller than your average one. Even with that attachment on, the light is still pretty small. I'm going to turn it up to a full intensity again to show you what that does to the light. So again, full intensity here, at arm's length, still a bit bright. I'm going to turn it down, change the color temperature a little bit and I've turned it down. So now it's just around 50% and you can see that it just breaks up that light a little bit, makes it softer. It floods onto your face a little bit more evenly. If I was, you know, being a bit more picky, I'd probably go for, let's say 15%. You know, quite a nice tex textured light. And again, the light is incredibly small. And one of my favorite things is how you close this. It's got two little clips on the side. Can you see those? Yeah. I love those things. You get the lantern attachment for the um, bigger lights. One of my favorite parts of dismantling that light 
is with both the aperture and the small rig version of the lantern you basically have to unhook it from the middle and when you do and the light collapses it gives you this gust of air that comes up it's one of my favorite things to do that and collapsing reflectors i always feel like collapsing reflectors on set it's always a good if you've got someone that's quite new give them a reflector and see if they can fold it um, but teaching people to fold reflectors it's just one of my favorite things to do on set it's so fun so the last light that I'm going to be looking at is the brightest light and that's the eye footage cob light and that is this light here you can see that it's a bit bigger than the small rig so here's a bit of a size comparison there's not a huge amount in it but the eye footage light is a lot brighter again it's by color and it has all your effects in there it doesn't have quite as many effects and the small rig doesn't have quite as many effects because they're not RGB, so they don't have your typical cop car and stuff like that. They do have lightning, faulty bulb, that kind of stuff. But this light is a beast. It competes with one of the small rig, the 120M lights. This is a 130. And yeah, super powerful. Comes with this attachment so that you can put your, you know, your more standard lanterns and diffusers on there. And again, that light is so small and compact, it's easy to fit in my camera bag. If you haven't seen my video a couple of weeks ago where I reviewed the iFootage Beaver bag, check that out. Today I went and picked up that bag. That's the thing, you know, I'm, I test some of this kit, some of this kit I own, some of the kit I've got from people to test out. If I want that kit, I still have to go and buy it, you know, so when I'm showing you stuff and I'm talking about it, I truly believe that it's good kit, you know, I'm willing to invest my own money in it and because I know that it's, it's a good value. A lot of the stuff that I'm trying to review, stuff that's you know good value for the cost it's never the most expensive stuff because my journey in filmmaking was that kind of indie route up it was searching for the the follow focuses that weren't like three grand but the ones that were a little bit cheaper and you know figuring out what you were sacrificing in terms of quality for the cost and i will say that now the quality of kit it's incredible it's crazy you can get so much for your money these days and it it does still shock me that, you know, there's certain companies that still can charge a lot of money. You know, Ari are always going to charge a lot of money because of their status in the industry. They've spent years building their brand. It's very, very good. It's very reliable. And that's what you're paying for a lot of the time. You know, their stuff is German made. And as we know, the Germans are notorious for building really good quality stuff. So I don't think that any camera is probably worth the huge price tag that it comes with like you know eighty thousand pounds that high and the price to performance these days you know when you jump from some of the cameras that are around 20 grand like the reds the sony's to the aries i don't think the value in terms of what you're getting justifies that cost now as i've said ari are you know the brand in the industry so they can do what they want who they don't have to worry about what I say, but for me, yeah, I'd love to own an Alexa, but I just couldn't justify that price over some of the other cameras that are out there and some of the other features. And it's the same with lighting. You know, the Ari sky panels, yeah, they're stunning lights. If I had an unlimited amount of funds, I would buy a sky panel, but me, the vast majority of you guys probably don't have that amount of money. So now you're looking at the Amarans, the iFootage lights, all the brands that are coming out to compete with those you know bigger more expensive lights and they're doing a fantastic job and you know the lights that i've shown here range from around 100 pounds to under 300 all the lights that i've shown here under 300 so incredible value compared to what i was buying you know 10 years ago some of the led panels were like 600 pounds for two and they were terrible quality so now what you can get for your money it's it's just incredible and i i love the fact that more brands are coming out they're becoming reliable, they're becoming well-known, and they're bringing out amazing kit that feels well-built. It feels robust. It feels, you know, like it's been built by someone who has an expertise in this area. There's new kit coming out every day. Nab's just around the corner. Can't wait to see what everyone's coming out with. Now, today, I went to pick up my beaver bag from Pro AV. If you've never been to Pro AV and you're thinking about buying kit, you should go to their showroom it's amazing. The guys there, they're super knowledgeable. They love to talk about kit and it's great to go. I love going. It's like Toys R Us for me. I get to look at all the shiny kit they've got. 
and they're just nice people that love to talk about camera kit so if you're a nerd like i am and you just want to go and talk about camera kit and check some stuff out then you should go down because yeah it's a great place all this kit that you can just play with <laughs> And they were nice enough today. I haven't included this light properly in the video just because I've only just got this light today. It's been on my radar for a while, but it is the Aperture MC Pro. So this is the pro version of the light I've got. Just for a comparison. So non-pro, pro. Non-pro, pro. Non -pro, pro. So I'm going to turn these lights on because the Pro version has a lot more LEDs built in. So I'm going to show you just how many. I'm going to put them on there, minimum brightness, and hold them up so you can see. Okay, so I've turned the aperture down a bit, and you can see here's the non-Pro version, here's the Pro version. Big difference in the amount of LEDs there. Now another difference with the Pro version is the build quality. It's bigger, it's definitely heavier, but not by much. And it's, you know, it's metal. You can feel the quality has increased. You can also go down in smaller increments. This goes up in 0.1 of a percent. So there's, you know, 10 increments between zero and 1%, which is useful. And again, it's going to allow you to fine tune that light to what you need. I haven't had a lot of time to test this out, but I've, I've got a feeling there's probably a lot more modes built in. This is double the price. You can also link these together. You can see on the bottom there that it's got these little connectors and you can buy kits of these lights where you can just join them up and you could have a bunch of them. I don't know what the limit is, but yeah, you can have a bunch of these together. It's definitely the next step up. I think I will invest in one of these eventually. I'm never getting rid of this. I'm never ever selling this light. It's too useful. I feel like lighting, unlike cameras, lighting is just one of those things that you never really need to get rid of because there'll always be a use case for it. There's always going to be a situation that you probably could use that light. I've got a bunch of RGB panels that I rarely use anymore, but there will be an occasion. And, you know, for how cheap you can pick these up now on Amazon, it just doesn't make sense to get rid of them. You might as well just keep them and keep them lying around. It's the same with the Arri lights, some of the tungsten lights, you know, those tungsten lights are super useful. They're big, they're heavy. They're not something you really portable, you can take around with you. They're kind of something that sits around until I'm on a job that I can drive. And then, you know, if, if I think I need them, I'll take them with me. I'm using the portable lights a lot more. So when I'm buying lights these days, I'm thinking about how easy it is to get from point A to point B because you know, you can't always drive. You're not just not in every situation that you can take your car. And especially if you film in London a lot or a city, I don't know about where you guys are based, but it's, it's really hard to find parking in certain locations. So usually you're like dropping the car and then it's a 10 minute walk to your location where you're filming. And that's not always ideal. If you buy from Pro AV, don't forget that you get a 10% discount on iFootage products. So I'll put that link down below and you can you know, if you're thinking about buying something, then you can use the link to get a discount. So that pretty much brings us to the end. Next week, I've got a cool video for you. I'm going to be putting the cinema camera, Blackmagic cinema camera up against the Lumix and the Komodo. I've done a bunch of comparisons. I'm really interested for you guys to watch that and tell me what you think. It does shock me still that when you put these cameras side by side, like there's so little in it in terms of what you're looking at from a camera that costs you know 1700 to a camera that costs six grand and obviously there's a difference when it comes to color grading and the bit rate that they record the code that they record in but just as a static image without moving the camera side by side same lens the results are really interesting and i can't wait to show you guys next week so don't forget to tune in for that so that's pretty much it guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you get notified when the videos go up. Any questions, drop them down below and I'll make sure I answer them. Catch you next time.